Hello, welcome to another video. Um, you may have noticed that uh, the last couple of videos have not been the, the standard sort of web scraping format, but um, yeah, trying to cover a few different things as well at the same time as uh, scraping and requests and so on. So I've um, been looking at uh, Python subprocess, C++, just a little bit of that. Um, been looking at Docker, I'll explain why in a minute. So these are what we're going to cover tonight. VS Code, which I know um, some of you may be uh, died in the wall Linux only sort of uh, people. Um, I'm kind of sitting on the fence really, but uh, I, uh, because I've got a Windows PC, um, I have to run Linux as a VM. Um, so as a VM, uh, I get screen tear and so on with Linux. So running VS Code natively on Windows is um, quite a nice experience. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's opened my eyes to a few things. Um, then I'll just we'll just run over a little quick bit of code where we, we show a for and a, co a, a for and a while loop. Um, and those are in relation to cracking codes. Cracking codes, um, what do I mean by that? I mean this. Um, it's not, it, you might think uh, some of the no starch books are, are sort of beginner's books, but um, yeah, sorry, it's gone. This particular one, um, I wouldn't say it's a beginner's book as such. Some bits are, but um, it covers. Um, transposition ciphers, vignette ciphers, and if you're interested in encryption, decryption, um, ciphers, and yeah, just uh, cracking codes. I'll leave it at that, but um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But um, first, we're just going to do a little, um, all I thought I'd do is I'd just show you these things. Um, you may or may not already know about them, and if you, if you do, then um, I'm sorry, just skip ahead. But um, if you don't, they're just sort of uh, little things which I've um, I've covered in passing, and um, yeah, let's just have a look at the uh, terminal here. So, um, what have we got? First thing I want to show you is just uh, secure my microphone. Um, subprocess. So, subprocess in Python is when you temporarily uh, suspend the the running Python code and um, go off and run something else. Um, you can return to Python depending on how you you run the output from the the second program. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you this. So this is uh, it's not um, anything very advanced, but um, uh, v sp1 subprocess one dot py and yeah if you can see just gonna make that a little bit bigger zoom in there we go um import subprocess so uh subprocess dot rum and then you can either call a standard this is on Linux Mint so uh apologize for any Windows users who uh, may not find this bit interesting but um, the next bit this bit hopefully will um, cat so obviously cat which I believe originated from concatenate uh, yeah trivia for you there data.txt so I've made a I've just done with uh, my text editor just made a file called txt um, so let me just um, Let's just um, uh, insert hash. There we go. Um, I'm just going to run that. So Python three sp one dot py. Hello bollocks by. So if you see my data dot txt hello bollocks by so all it did was the python file um, went off and ran cat and which cat 
uh, printed the output from the data.txt file. So if we go back into the Python file, uh, just uncomment that, that subprocess.run. Um, now, you have to use the period character, the forward slash, and then the name of the executable. Um, I'll show you this in a minute, but um, yeah, D1. So just remember D1. All we're doing is we're running D1. Uh, and if we run Python 3 sp1.py, hello, bollocks, bye. So it's still reading the text file. Now enter a letter, A to Z. A. Letter is not A, B, or C. It's, look, it's case sensitive and also it's a very poor C++ program because I didn't even leave the uh, new line at the end of it. But anyway, you can see it's run um, cat, which is obviously, <laughs> it's waiting for some input, um, data dot, data dot txt. Let's do uh, cat, we'll just do it from here. There we go. So cat and then it ran D1. D1 is just a shoddy little program which I wrote. Enter a letter A to Z. A letter A not found. It's because I added the period after it. Let's do um, lowercase a. Letter A found. Okay, so if we do... Um, I'm going to change the directory where the source code for that C++ file was. And then if we do v d one dot c p p and there you go thus case a case b case c case d so if you type in an a b c or a d it says um the letter is found otherwise the default is to say the letter is not a b or c and obviously it's case sensitive so uh yeah that's the that's just the little c plus plus example file which i made to do a simple um, sub-process demonstration with. So what next? Yeah, so we've covered sub-process C++. So really, it's very simple. I'll just go back, recap on it one last time. Um, <laughs> Python can't open SP1. Oh, wrong directory. Yeah, there we go. Um, so if we go back in and look at that just one more time. Import subprocess. So you need to put that at the top along with your other imports. Um, subprocess.run and then in brackets the path to the executable and then followed by any other parameters which that executable needs as arguments. So um, yeah, cat obviously needs to have a file name that it's going to show you. Um, right, sub import subprocess, subprocess dot run. Okay, um, yeah, Docker. So, uh, from a network's background, um, I've heard Docker bandied around before, not really used it. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I've seen it on some, uh, on my travels, I've seen it on some job descriptions. And um, yeah, just a very quick demo of Docker. And the reason why I came across it and uh, just decided to um, spend some time looking at it was because um, I found a very good tutorial on um, REST. Uh, sorry, this is the uh, go away. This is the uh, shell command subprocess run examples uh, linuxhint.com. Anyway, yeah, going back to REST. What we've got is uh, HTTPS stackify.com forward slash rest API 
tutorial. Um, so what we're actually what you could learn here is you could learn about Docker and also you could learn about REST. Two birds with one stone. So uh, for this tutorial, we need a system with Docker installed. You can find the instructions for your computer here. First, follow the instructions and install Docker. Once you've completed the installation, you can download and run our sample REST server. So um, Docker, to me, is like a, you've got the benefits of a virtual machine without actually needing a virtual machine. Um, it's a little container and it runs, um, for instance, this Docker container effectively runs a little web server inside it so um, you haven't got all of the bulk of a whole VM the whole operating system all docker is is the the smaller bit that you actually want so um, if I just show you uh, let me just find up uh, go across to my other tab that's genie let's um, Let's go back up through my history and see what my doc commands. Yeah, so we go. So um, once you've got Docker installed, so Docker is um, it's not a Python thing, so you don't use pip. It's actually um, sudo apt-get install. Um, so once you've got it installed, then you can run sudo docker run hello world. Now, if I run it, I'll get an error. Oh, I won't, no. I thought I would because I've already got an instance of it running. But uh, yeah, hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. To generate this message, Docker took the following steps. Uh, you can read all that. So um, yeah, docker.com. On here, I've installed the version for uh, Linux, AMD underscore 64. And then to get this server running which I'm about to show you I then followed these steps which were docker run then you specify the port number um, I don't know what the D and the name is but um, oh yeah I had to download uh, well yeah you download the image once you've got the image then you can fire it up with docker and docker downloads the server image and runs it the command tells it to make the web server available on port 8080. So once you've done all of this, installed Docker, downloaded the image, um, go to 127.0.0.1 and this URL here, and you find that you have a rather good REST tutorial, um, and it demonstrates or allows you to experiment with get, post, delete, get and patch and put as well again so um, yeah it's if you need to rest um, postman is quite a good program to run and experiment with you can get uh, check your responses you check for 200 responses and so on um, but this is a much uh, much I don't know this is just really good because uh, response class so it's 200 so you've got an example value there um, what you do is this is the imagine this is the code in your script and then you want to try it out so what you're actually doing is show you try it out it's taking its time Is it still running? Maybe not. That's taking too long. Yeah, definitely taking too long. So let's um I'm just gonna refresh that. Uh is Docker working? Is Docker actually running? Uh
That's um hmm. It's still running. Let's try um try it again. No, I'm just gonna pause it there. I'm gonna um just fire up Docker again and then I'll be back. Right, yeah, sorry about that. Um I'm new to Docker, so uh yeah. Had a little issue where it was telling me that uh oh, name's already in use, blah blah blah. So what I've done is I've renamed uh the original instance to tut two and now I've uh yeah, I'm back in the tutorial. So um yeah. <laughs> I'm no expert at Docker, but I just really wanted to show you what this can do and uh, how, what a good tutorial it is. Um, so yeah, get. Um, this is an example of some uh, obviously JSON format that we might want to um, send to an API, and we would then use um, we would use the following. And we would send it to the uh, URL, then the uh, resource, and then we would end up with. I think we've just added. Um, oh, so that's the default. So we've just added um, states code hundred code value naught. I think we've just added that to his default. No, that's response body, response code two hundred. Oh, we've just, yeah, so now we've, uh, let's um, do get here. There's another example, get, uh, try out. Uh, so we want to do, we want to get where the, um, let's get all IDs. So star, And um, yeah, what have we got? Response messages. Response class states two hundred. Let's tr okay. Let's try value where ID equals one. Ah, uh, there we go. So you can see by sending. Um, Effectively, what we're doing is sending this with employees slash one. We're sending that to the web server, and it's returning this response. So that's testing out get. Um, we can test out post here as well. So if we, okay, let's um, ah yeah, I remember. This is the uh, the text. If you click this box across here, this is just um, an example waiting for you. And by clicking it, it transfers it into this box, and this is the text that you're actually going to submit. So, uh, yeah, if you had that in your Python code, and then you were to, um, for instance, if you were using requests, you would do requests, uh, and then requests dot um, requests dot post. I'll show you. requests dot post python hopefully or python request post method so yeah you would do this you would go away um you'd do request dot post and then the url which the url would be what we're looking at down here so that would be the url here it's 127 because we're running it locally on our machine but um if that that would be http um some some site.com ap as long as i had the api and you had read the documentation for the api and you understood the format um the format usually is um the name of uh the the attribute that you want to update followed by the id of that attribute so uh yeah that's python requests post methods um so we've looked at get post you got put patch there as well so um yeah really this is just a quick uh quick intro to using um docker badly and a look at this um 
this tutorial so yeah really I'm I'm not I'm not doing a tutorial I'm just sort of showing you that this is available and it's quite good because you can download um, go away you can download his example and it's all contained in a docker container so you can then test out send using get post um, yeah so the mistake I made before was um, uh, let's try and delete one actually just before we go delete employee number one try it out uh, yeah and that's showing you deletes and so on um, yeah so what you do is you need to use that uh, box that transfers the code across for you which uh, yeah like there for instance and it transfers it to here and then you can post it um, if I, I could do the employee number 44 there try it out and then when we do get again um, 44 try it out response 200 response body and that's what we've just removed um, yeah anyway enough about that let's uh, we've so we've covered um, sub process we've looked at docker uh, rest or a, a rest tutorial running inside a docker container um, as you can see there are a few little things that will catch you out such as um, conflict the container name is already in use um, yeah docker documentation <laughs> okay so next uh, we're just gonna have another brief look at VS code and then we'll look at uh, a for loop or while loop example taken from cracking codes and um, yeah let's move across to um, just bear with me and I'm just gonna drag this screen across VS code so yeah runs on Microsoft Windows and um, visually it looks a bit like uh, PyCharm you might say so um, yeah, yeah if you're familiar with PyCharm you might just think well what, what's the benefit um, it's got some very good autocomplete sort of features in it um, it's got built-in terminal and I've just changed the key binding so Control B, and there it is. You've got a built-in um, terminal running there. Um, you've got it integrates with GitHub. Um, sorry there, and Git init, uh, Git show, no commits yet. Git status and then you go so um yeah uh it's it's got a huge amount of um plugins and extensions um one of the reasons why i wanted to install it was because uh, going forward i'm looking to use other languages as well not just python so obviously pycharm um would only allow me to program in um, Python. So if we do, it's uh, <laughs> gone wrong already. Includes IO stream uh, using, sorry, using namespace standards in main um, hello world with lots of L too many L's but never mind um, save it as C++ uh, demo.cpp and then uh, you can see it's already changed the, uh, the highlighting and the formatting uh, if I do Control B, don't don't let me down now. And um, it's 
So I've been doing Python all day. Let's just um, demo, demo, demo. I have problem. What's the problem? <laughs> That's why I didn't compile. Right. Uh, just hang in there, and we can see it has it's compiled it um, using uh, G plus plus. I had to install uh, Mini GW, which uh, you need for Windows to compile uh, C++. So yeah, um, VS Code, um, if you want to stick with Linux, then um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't. Um, <laughs> wouldn't argue with you. Uh, but if you do ever need to write stuff in Windows uh, or if you've got a Windows PC and using a VM or dual booting it into Linux is sort of uh, too much of a chore or too, it's got too many headaches um, or if you just want to stick with Windows or if you're running a Mac maybe you, you want to uh, use VS Code on a Mac I think it's available so um, yeah C++ it's really I mean if I was doing this in um, in Linux, I would probably end up using Genie and then doing, I think it's F F5 to execute. But um, yeah, no, this is, I mean, the extensions and everything in the highlighting and the autocomplete is, is great. So um, yeah, no, I'm quite impressed. Um, you're talking to somebody who used Visual Basic many years ago. So um, yeah, there is a bit of familiarity there, certainly no loyalty. So um, yeah, anyway, um, the reverse cipher, um, just another quick look at the Cracking Codes um, book. I've got a P if you buy the book, you also get the PDF as well, so that's nice. Um, cracking Codes, um, yeah, it begins with the Reverse Cipher, Chapter One. So um, Reverse Cipher, I can't remember. If you you can um, go to the website No Starch forward slash cracking codes and there is uh, a link there or um, it's also got a page on github Al Swigart um, and yeah you, you can download all of the source files for for the book which saves you having to type them all out but um, yeah um, what we've got here is I think in his example he was using a while loop that's right so um, message so a secret message that you want to encode three can keep a secret if two of them are dead so then translated equals uh, empty string I equals length of message minus one so I think that's about 48 characters long uh, so you want to go from naught to 47 because obviously it start uh, I starts at naught so uh, while X is I think I've changed this from his example. I've rewritten it, but um, yeah, while x is less than i, so while x is less than forty-seven, so you want to do this forty-seven times, and then translated equals translated plus a message of i. So to begin with, i will be forty-seven. So you'll actually be adding the forty-seventh character to a uh, character forty-seven. So you'll be adding probably the full stop um, to translated. Uh, the translated string and then you'll be taking one off of i so then i will be down to 46 so you'll be taking the 46th character and adding it to your string so the 45 44 43 so effectively you're building up a new string but it's in reverse and then you print translated so if i run it um yeah just if you excuse let me just um page that up a bit you don't want to see the uh, the error from the c++ compile so three can peak three can peak three can keep a secret if two of them are dead so yeah you can see what it's done is it's reversed the string um if you convert it to a list there is a, a function called reverse anyway um and here I think it's a list. Is it a list? Um, let's just have a look at that. Bear with me. Python reverse. Let's try reverse string. Oh yeah, you can reverse a string by doing um, uh, colon colon minus one. Um, I'll show you that. 
but I thought there was a function actually reverse. So this reverse maybe that runs on. Uh, does it run on a string or does it run run on a list? Not a big deal either way, but um, reverse a list. Yeah, so built in, you can reverse. You can reverse. I'll just paste that into here. You can reverse a list in Python using built-in reverse or reversed methods. Um, yeah, so that's cracking the codes. That's um, reversing a string. And now in my example where I've just changed it to use a for loop. So all I've done is I've said um, translated equals uh, basically the length of the message so or the length of the message minus one so that'll be uh, I think it's 48 so it'll be uh, 47 so yeah first time it iterates it'll be 47 uh, minus one then 47 minus two 47 minus three 47 minus four all the way down back down to uh, until it's um, zero well now the, the iteration is going from uh, not up to 48 so it'll be doing 48 47 iterations but each time it will be um, it'll be taking the message of 48 minus 1 then the next time it'll be 48 minus 2 so it'll be gradually adding all of these in reverse and if we run that same again three can keep a secret if two of them are dead so yeah um, You may or may not like books these days. Um, obviously, a lot of Udemy tutorials and just obviously real world examples of coding and everything. But um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of treat this as just a bit of a. Um, you know, some people like doing Sudoku's, some people do crosswords, some people do word searches. I just think this is amusing, just trying to sort of uh, mess about with numbers. And you, you're gradually building up a little bit of knowledge of sort of hacking, brute force attacks, um, asymmetric encryption. So it's all good stuff, especially if you're interested in uh, security, network security, cyber security, and so on. So um, yeah, so today we've looked at, we've looked at Visual Studio Code, which um, I'm kind of um, indifferent really as to whether Windows is evil and Linux is brilliant or vice versa. So um, yeah, that's, that's up to you. Um, personally, I'm, I've been quite impressed with uh, VS Code, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't put anybody off it. That's for sure. Um, so we've looked at Python subprocess C plus plus. So all we've done is we've run a, a very small C plus plus file from Python, uh, and we also run cat. You can also run ls, grep, whatever. Um, yeah, Docker. Um, bit of a hit and miss. Look at Docker. And um, yeah, the Docker example, I think uh, Docker's worth persevering with and just having some a bit of knowledge of because it is quite uh, common and will only get become more common. And VS Code, we've just covered and cracking code. So yeah, I'm you know I'm not um, I'm not on any commission for promoting um, for promoting uh, cracking the codes book. But um, yeah, if you're interested in just sort of um, puzzles and so on either if you're interested in uh, solving little puzzles with code or if you're looking at getting into security then it's a really good book and um, that's enough from now so um, yeah until next time